Hello and welcome back to Dosh Tech. Today we are going to be looking at Pi. Unfortunately not the edible, edible sort, but um, here we have the Banana Pi and the Raspberry Pi. These are of course single board computers. These are small, inexpensive um, computers. They're about the size of a credit card. And they've got some impressive specs for what they are and the power they consume. So what we're going to do in this video is basically have a look at uh, their physical aspects and also some of the um, performance you can expect from them. So the banana came in this uh, rather generic white box it just says banana pie open source on it. Um, but basically it's a slightly more advanced version of the rather well-known Raspberry Pi. This is a model B plus and um, there is actually a few quite a few striking resemblances as you can see here between the Raspberry Pi B plus and the banana Pi. So let's start with the physical aspects. They both have Ethernet and USB on this end, except the Raspberry has 10100 and the Banana has Gigabit. So that's one of the similarities. However, there is, of course, a little infrared sensor here, so you can use um, infrared commands via a small remote or something like that with Banana, where you don't get that on the, the, uh, the Raspberry. Coming around to the side then, we have the pretty much exact, no, it is exactly the same setup here on both of them. Um, on both of them here, you have the 26 GPIO pins. They are basically what you'd use, that's main, the main purpose of it is to program and control uh, robotics, electronics, any other things like that that you can possibly control off of them via computing programs written in Python or uh, other code. They also both have composite video out and the 3.5mm audio jack. And the banana, however, does also have a small microphone in there. So uh, you can also use uh, voice commands or speech recognition or whatever you want to, really. Going around to the back side. Some differences here, as you can see. They both have a USB mini B on this side. However, the Raspberry, that is an input for the power, whereas this is an output. Uh, this is actually a USB type uh, OTG connector, which is a on the go connector, which basically is just basically a small USB and you can get slight, uh, small storage devices and things that fit it. The, that's all that's on it on the, um, on the Raspberry, but the Banana actually has two physical on off buttons so there's actually switches that you can press there's a like you would have on any other normal computer there's an on and uh, well, on and off a power button and also a reset so that's quite helpful as um, obviously you don't want it all on all the time if it's plugged in because obviously sometimes it might be difficult to reach the plug for example it's not exactly a big thing but it can be helpful in some situations on this side is where things are really quite different the standard raspberry just has uh, the um, HDMI port there, which is obviously used for connecting to a TV or monitor or whatever you're connecting to it. And that, that's it. That's all that's on that side. However, the banana contains the same HDMI, so you can still output uh, audio and video through this connection to a TV or monitor. You've got the power input, which is the same connection as that, so uh, I wouldn't want to mix that up. I wouldn't want to know what happens either if you were to do that incorrectly. But also, you might have noticed a power thing here, that's a 5 volt power supply for a small hard drive or SSD which would be connected via this SATA port here, it actually has SATA support so you can actually use a, uh, a hard drive or SSD with it, which is quite a useful feature if you are making lots of code for example. So um, that's the physical aspects of them, now let's move on to the specs of the, uh, the, the Pies. The top of the Raspberry is where you'll find everything that uh, is related to the specs. You have, for example, have the two um, connectors here, so that's for um, outputs to whatever that connects via a ribbon cable. You've got a small um, 
controller over there, I think that's for USB audio, things like that. And um, in the middle is the core, that's the, um, that's the CPU, GPU and RAM, all in that little, tiny little um, square here. In there you'll find a uh, you'll find a 700 megahertz single core processor, which is um, what what runs that what what runs the uh, Raspberry, which is enough um, for quite a few things that you're going to be doing on this. You're not exactly going to be doing heavy tasks on something this small anyway. Um, but that's that's perfectly adequate for um, you know a few programs, a few few basic codes, and some controls for things, and. Um, but obviously you might want more power, which is why you might look at the banana. The banana, as you can see, just has the, the, the ports on the top where you can connect a display or a, or a camera or whatever little modules you can connect to it, which I believe there are a few available. But yeah, as you can see, there's no actual hardware, there's no actual um, core or a CPU or anything on the top of this. That's because it's actually on the bottom of the, uh, the banana. Uh, as we can see here, on the bottom, you have nothing on the back of the Raspberry apart from the SD card slot. This is a Raspberry Pi Model B Plus, as I said, and that has therefore has a standard SD card um, size. So um, you can literally get any SD card like this one, for example. This is a 32 gig one that I use with the banana. So you've got enough storage on there. But um, that's all that's on the bottom of that. But however, on this you have a core here and GPU, I believe and um, two RAM chips. So you actually have two separate RAM chips. So these are 512 megabytes each. They are actually made by Samsung, it says on them. So obviously you have a gig of RAM on this, 512 megabytes on that, so twice the RAM. The CPU though is really quite impressive for its size and, and power consumption. It is a uh, all-winner A20 core and it is a 1 gigahertz dual core CPU. And that, on something that small, doesn't require heatsink, I think, is quite impressive. The only other thing on the bottom is the SD card slot, however this one is shielded, although it does still take the same standard size SD card, as you can see there. In terms of Pies though, that's, um, that's all I've got to say about the Pi really. They're, they're quite little fun things to play with. Um, yeah, they're fun to play with. They, uh, you can do sorts of basic coding on them. You can learn to code. You can make little programs and things, and you can start using GPIO control to control robotics, electronics, motors, lights, whatever, basically, whatever you want to run off of them. But that's about it. Um, they both have basic desktops and um, operating systems on them. They both run these particular ones. I'm using this SD card for, as I said. Um, these are running Raspbian, which is the, uh, the, the, the most common OS for them. Um, this obviously just runs a standard Raspbian. This actually runs a Banana Pi version, which is, uh, more, which is compatible with the, the uh, all-winner core on that one. Other than that, basically it's as simple as that one's slightly cheaper. The Raspberry is cheaper, more well-known, and there's a, there's a few more bits and pieces available, and like cases and accessories like that, because obviously it's more well-known. But on the other hand, Got the banana pie as well. It's just the same thing, except slightly more expensive. A few more specs. So if you want to be doing more things on the operating system, for example, you like want more, more uh, programs open, or you want to watch a video, or whatever really you want to do. This is basically a more powerful version than that. Other than that, they both have access to the same Pi store. So um, in terms of pies, I'd certainly go for banana, and as a fruit, I prefer a banana as well. So. That's what I choose. It's, it's just a more powerful version, so why not? It's not that much more expensive, and it still has accessories available for it, like uh, this case, for example, which is in pieces at the moment because it's not in it. But um, yeah, that's it. That's a banana pie. Basic specs, but um, it's perfectly adequate for um, coding and literally anything else you could think to do with it. There's quite a few possibilities. And this one obviously has more possibilities in terms of SATA. You can make a you can make a server out of this if you really wanted to. And it'd certainly be low power. But um, anyway, that's enough rambling. That's the uh, the pies. Both the pies together. They are quite interesting, and I uh, not you not the sort of content I usually uh, produce. But um, it's quite an interesting thing, and I uh, just thought I'd um, have a look at it. So that's the that's the 
raspberry pi and the banana pie. I hope you've enjoyed the video and um, thumbs up, comment, rate, subscribe, all of that stuff. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time on Dodge Tech.